Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, Toby Salgado here, host of Super Agents Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hey, the show today, I have a guy, bring him on. His name is Aaron Kaufman, and he's a recruiter for KW. Now, we don't just talk about KW and recruitment and all that. We get into a ton of stuff. We talk about it on the show today. We talk about why you should put your brand above everything. Super important. Uh, why it costs seven times more money to get to get a new customer than just marketing to your list and past clients. So why you should do that? We talk about recruiting and retention. How to pick the right brokerage for you? Now I think that's important. I think you know we do dig into KW a lot here, but finding the right brokerage, finding the right place where you can thrive is important. We talk about that. We talk about why you should focus on lead generation three hours a day and why the people who do that go out and murder it. They kill it. And why people who don't, don't win. So um, we even, we talk about social media. We talk about why you should blog. We talk about how to optimize your marketing and sales funnel. So, and look, this guy was a really, really passionate guy. I kind of listened to it again. And uh, it's funny at minute 42, you hear me laughing because I'm just trying to break in and this guy just keeps rolling on. And that's okay. He, he, he really, really is passionate. So I really hope you like this one. Stay tuned. Now, before we get to that show, get to the content, I just want to tell you a couple th- quick things that I always do. Hashtag, right? Unpack that idea. Uh, two, this show needs reviews. I can use always, I, lo- I haven't asked for reviews for a very long time. So uh, it takes a couple minutes, go to the site, uh, or you can go to iTunes and just give the show an honest review. I'd love it. And, um, uh, if you don't know, so, you know, it's funny. Some people listen to the show on iTunes. Some people listen to the show on Stitcher. Some people, oddly enough, just literally type it up superagentslive.com and listen to it there. So you have lots of listening opportunities. Um, we do have show notes. We have a lot of other stuff on the site. So I would say, go check out the site, superagentslive.com. Um, and if you don't know, We've been launching our radio campaign. If you want to add another 100 transactions, 200 transactions to your deal flow, the one surefire way to do it is radio. Now, now radio is not every, right for everybody. You have to have a team. You have to have a budget. But if you think you are right, send me a message. Let me know. I'm only putting one agent on the radio in each market, right? There's some exclusivity there. So if you think you want to be that person, send me a message, send me an email. Let's chat. Let's see if you're a good fit. All right. Hey, let's get to the show. I hope you love it. So I'm thrilled to welcome Aaron Coffin. Uh, hey, Aaron, thanks for taking the time out today. No problem, Toby. Thanks for having me. So listen, Aaron, I've given the, the, the audience a brief overview of your background, but maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your business. Sure. Um, you know, I'm a former active real estate agent, was previously with Caldwell Banker, came to Keller Williams, sold actively with Keller Williams for about five years, and then... Uh, you know, I was really became really inspired by my experience at Keller Williams and the wealth building opportunity that Keller Williams Profit Share uh, offers our associates, and and sort of made a shift in my life back in '05 where I decided to make my one thing attracting agents to Keller Williams, and uh, you know really focused on that for a long time, and now I've kind of evolved into a growth coach, not just consulting people coming into the, into the real estate business, but also, you know, coaching Keller Williams agents, et cetera. So, um, I don't sell actively anymore, but you know, I, uh, I, I coach and train new, new agents and existing Keller Williams agents. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Listen, let's, let's talk a little bit about the KW model because I know it's different and, and it was so funny. I just, just this morning I had a phone call from this guy yeah. in Danbury, Connecticut. And he's like, he's like, look, man, I, you know, I, I have, I have, I can either join a KW team or this other, this other company. I never heard of him. It's, you know, it's yeah. East, East, whatever. <laughs> um, and, and look, and he may, he may not, you know, for that person, he may not know this model and I don't know it well enough to, 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 so take a couple minutes and explain the model and how it's different sure. from Coldwell Banker. Sure. And, and Toby, let me just preface this whole conversation with a quick disclaimer. You know, any opinions or thoughts that I uh, 
express in this podcast do not reflect those of Keller Williams International. Um, you know, I, I, I'm affiliated with the company, but I'm also an independent contractor. And I, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm protecting myself as well as Keller yeah, Williams or anything sure. that you're, I might say. You're not a KW but, spokesperson. <laughs> but here's the deal, Toby. You know, there are, yeah, not to get too deep in the conversation, but I mean, basically there are three kinds of real estate companies. There's the dependent model, the independent model, and then you have what Keller Williams is, which is an interdependent model. And, you know, Gary Keller, you know, is such a visionary in this business. But, you know, the one thing that he really did to re- sort of, you know, revolutionize the real estate industry, he said, look, you know, I'm going to be the first person in this industry to acknowledge the one thing that every other real estate company refuses to acknowledge, and that is agents are the reason real estate companies do business, not real estate brand, brand marketing. So Gary says, you know what, we're going to create a real estate company where agents will never want or need to leave. And so he creates this interdependent model where the agents are treated as partners, we're treated as, as stakeholders in this company. And yeah, profit share is a part of that, but there's this sense of ownership that Keller Williams agents have in this company. And you know, we receive about 48% of the owner profits get shared back with the agents. But the, the biggest value proposition of being an agent at Keller Williams is what happens is now you get all these agents that are vested in a common goal, which is to make Keller Williams as profitable as it can be. So Toby, we don't just have the best training, the best education. We have a company where agents are actually sharing ideas and masterminding with each other in an industry that's always been dog eat dog. And so the profit share money, look, that's icing on the cake. But the reality is when you're a part of a real estate company of a hundred thousand real estate associates that all have a, a vested interest in the common goal, it kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage over agents at other companies where not only is there no incentive to share ideas, they're actually directly competing for the same thing. And so that's kind of how we're different. We're a profit sharing company, but we're also an open book company where the agents are involved in the decision making process. And as a result, Toby, in 30 years, Keller Williams has become the number one real estate company in North America, has zero debt, is more profitable than it's ever been in a down economy. And pretty much every other major real estate company is having major issues because brand marketing is not what drives real estate business. It's real estate agents. And if you can give them what they want, they'll never leave your company. Right. Okay. So, so, uh, thanks for, I mean, that, that was a good sort of, you unpack that, you know, dependent, independent, yeah. and then interdependent. Now yeah. here's, here's something I, 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 I'm not clear on. So, so what, sure. l- let's say, let's say that somebody works for a Coldwell banker. You know, I, I just yeah. got this question the other day, right? So, so, yeah. um, it's, it's Toby Salgado sells real estate or do you put your personal brand in front of the corporate brand or do you put the corporate brand in front That's of your personal question. brand? And and you That's were, a great question. Yeah. So yeah, so you were aiming at people want to put at Keller Williams. They want to build the 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 KW brand over their brand. Is that what I'm hearing from you? No, no. It's actually the other way around. So okay. the I you know there's a great quote from Gary Keller, Toby, and he says, "At Keller Williams, the agent is the brand of recognition. Keller Williams is the brand of reputation." Mm. Okay. So. So here's the deal. We, you know, we're the, there's no question that we're the leaders in this industry on teaching agents how to brand and market their own business. All right. So we want them out there marketing their real estate business first and Keller Williams, you know, secondarily. Okay. The difference, Toby, is that Caldwell Banker, you know, is, by the way, owned by the you know, Rheology that owns Century 21, Sotheby's, ERA. That are homes and garden. Okay, this is a large corporation that values its its brands as its greatest asset, and they spend an overwhelming majority of their resources marketing their brands to to the consumers. They run Super Bowl commercials. They put ads in magazines, ads in newspapers. You know, they they sponsor Sports Center. They do all these great things. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars a year marketing their company, and they're turning around, Toby. And they're training their agents to market their company. 
too, as, as, as a company would do that values its brand. The problem for Rheology and Caldwell Banker is that people don't hire real estate agents because of the company they work for. They hire agents because of the agent. And I'm a great example. When I came here from Keller Williams, from Caldwell Banker, I brought all of my clients and all of my relationships with me to Keller Williams. And if you're looking for any kind of sign, Toby, of where this industry has gone in the last 30 years, you need to look no further than the fact that Keller Williams is now the largest real estate company in North America. We did it in 30 years. We have zero debt. And Toby, when's the last time you saw a Keller Williams commercial on TV or a Keller Williams blimp flying over a football game? The bottom line is we don't spend any money marketing our company to the consumers. And now we're the number one real estate company in North America. That should make people start thinking about how the industry has changed in the last 30 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, you should. And, and look, like the, 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 when you were talking about brand and, you know, these companies, Rheology yeah. and doing Super Bowl commercials and all that stuff. Sure. And, and then that quote by Gary Keller, you know, it yes. made me think. It made me think of a, a, a quote that uh, Buddy Blake. I don't know if you know who Buddy Blake is, but Buddy Blake. Came, the game sounds familiar. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a big time. He's he's a big guy in the in the Midwest, or whatever. But it, it, here, here's a quote. I thought it was a great quote. He said, he said, uh, when when thinking about consumers, said buyers buy buy oh crap buyers buy houses, but sellers buy agents. Right. So in a yeah. lot, and so in, in, in one level up, you're, that's that's the sort of the brand buying brand recognition that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. So. Uh, so, you know, and Toby, I, if I could put an exclamation point on that just for you, just for if I, if I may. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a business concept out there, which is, you know, it costs any business seven times more money to acquire a new customer as it does to retain an existing customer. OK. Yeah, yep. Well, what makes Keller Williams different from pretty much every other real estate company out there is that Toby, every other real estate company thinks their customers are buyers and sellers. Keller Williams believes their customers are real estate agents. Okay. Mm. So when you don't have to worry about your customers, AKA your real estate agents leaving your company and taking their business to another company because there's not a better company out there, then you don't have to spend any money acquiring new customers. Okay. So I just want to make that analogy between how we view agents as our customers and how that trans sort of transcends into why Keller Williams spends no money marketing our company and has no debt. It's because we don't have to spend any money acquiring new customers. All we have to do, Toby, is attract the great agents and keep them. Right. And by the way, just and their clients, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say for everybody out there, if 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 you know if they're going, why is Aaron talking about uh, you know Keller Williams like this? And it's because look, yeah. you are you are a, a, an independent recruiter for for Keller Williams, and this is what you do. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay, but I'm also but tell you what what also drives me is I mean let's be let's be clear here. I don't care how much money I can make building wealth and profit share if I didn't believe Keller Williams you know, was the best company for agents that were ser- you know, serious about being business owners, I wouldn't be having this conversation. So yeah, obviously I'm biased to Keller Williams, but what I hope people who follow me on social media and who know me here is that, look, I'm just speaking the truth. And when you speak the truth, life's a lot easier. So, you know, I'm not in the business of trying to get people to join Keller Williams. I'm in the business of educating people so that they can make the best decision for themselves. Right. Period. And again, I just wanted to make, I just wanted it to be clear on yeah. what why. And by the way, you can find sure. you can find Aaron's Aaron's site is moving careerscom So you can check him out, yes, check sir. out his stuff there. Okay. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. Uh, because because you know joining as a as a new agent that's that's really who you work with a lot right you work with, sure. with new agents like you know picking the right company to work for is very important um you know you want to you want to find uh, some place that gives you the, the most training um you also want to find uh you know a brand that matches your market so if you are yeah. uh, if you are selling houses in Beverly Hills you don't necessarily you know you don't want to join Remax um, you know, you want to join, uh, you know, what's that Hilton, Hilton Highland or, you know, the, you know, you know what, um, 
Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so, so well, I'm going to disagree with you, Toby. I okay. mean, I think there's a value there to brand reputation and, and finding the right brand to fit your niche. But once again, what's more important is what's your what's your value as a real estate agent to your potential buyers and sellers? And, and yeah, it's, a, it's important to be affiliated with a reputable real estate company, and certainly it's not going to hurt to be affiliated with a reputable company that's also tailored to the market you want to do business with, but it should not be the defining factor for what you look for. I, oh, I told I, yeah, no, no, I, I 100% agree. And if, and if I came up, if, if it sounded like I was saying that, I, I, I didn't mean that at all. I just, I just, you know, having the right brand uh, for your market is important. Um, sure. you, know, you know, cause look, sure. Sotheby's is a name. Sotheby's is, I don't know anything about their company, but Sotheby's yeah. is a name that, that, uh, you know, when you hear Sotheby's, you, you think of, you think of expensive. You think of luxurious. You think of, um, sure. you know, it's it, there, there's kind of. There's, I am. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So at what point, right today, KW has 100,000 agents. Um, yeah. At what point does, you know, Keller Williams. Be, look, let me let, let me let me start this way. In any company, any company uh, or brokerage, um you have the top 20, you have the, your, your, you know, your, your t- three groups. The top 20% are the people who are killing it. You have yep. the middle 60% who are, they're holding their own, but they're, you know, nothing to write home about, but they're holding their own. And then you have the bottom 20% just taking up space. Um, <clears throat> what happens when Keller Williams gets to 300,000 agents and that bottom 20%, you know, it, it starts to dilute the whatever brand uh, strength KW has built? Sure. Well, no, and you're hitting on a point that I'm very passionate about as well, which is, you know, Keller Williams is growing at an astronomical rate. I mean, the most important thing is that our our leadership and our culture and our standards have to keep up with that growth because, you know, what's the value of a brand? I mean, most other real estate companies think the value of a brand is how much money they spend telling everybody how great it is. The reality is, we're only as good as the agents that are allowed to, to market Keller Williams. So, you know, we're, we're a company that obviously wants to um, be in business with the right people. And, you know, there's a great quote, Toby, from a, one of my favorite sort of TED Talk videos out there called The Golden Circle by a guy named Simon Sinek. I don't know if you're familiar with oh, yeah. him. He wrote a book called Start With Why. Yep. But, you know, his one of his great lines is that, look, it's not about being in business with everybody that needs what you have. It's about being in business with the people that value what you value. And I think the great thing about Keller Williams is that, you know, we're a training and education company disguised as a real estate company. And, you know, also we're a company that's in business with agents that think like business owners, meaning we're not in the business of providing our agents with leads. Okay. Hmm. We're in the business of teaching agents how to be business owners and how to generate their own leads. And you know, Toby, just as much as I do is that, you know, real estate agents that don't understand that they're in the lead generation business first and the real estate industry second, they're not, they're the ones that are not in the business five years right. from when they get in. Yep. So my message to you is look, I mean, look, nothing's perfect. You're dealing with an industry that's got very low standards, unfortunately. What we hope as a company is that by being training based and education based and, integrity-based and business-minded that, look, we're attracting agents that value what we value. And sure, 20% of Keller Williams agents will always make 80% of the commission. What we hope is that we're raising the bar for this industry by being education-based and by attracting these type of agents. And ultimately, look, the bottom 20%, it's just not worth it to be a Keller Williams if you're not a producing agent. There's no reason to be here. It's not the cheapest place to be. Mm. So eventually you hope that time will weed out the people that are in our lower 20% or the company will, will try to do their best to rise to raise those people up. But at the end of the day, Toby, you know, I deal with a lot of people coming in this business. Some people don't want to be a business owner. Some people want to play real estate agent. And sometimes it takes them a year or two in the business to realize they're in the wrong business, you know? Right. Yeah. So, so, so you hope by default we're raising the standards for this industry and okay. that the type of agents that are going to be ultimately in our lower 20% are going to be better than the industry standards. You know what I mean? But we, we always are challenged with that stuff. Why waste energy and education and training and technology and support 
on agents that never are going to participate in it, that don't come into the office, that don't teach classes, you know, or share ideas. I mean, so you can offer them what they want, what they need, but only a portion of them are going to actually do what you tell them to do. Yep, no, I agree. Yeah. So let's let's kind of move into you, how yeah. you coach, right? You're a growth coach. Now, yeah. you said something pretty interesting to me just a second ago, and you said some people want to be uh, a business owners. Yeah, have a job. Uh, uh, well, no, that, well, hold on. This is what you said. Some people want to be business owners, which was that's own a business. Yeah. Then you said some people want to play real estate agent, right? That's to have a job to me. Um, sure. And, and then you earlier you said – you know, if you don't know that you are in the lead generation business, uh, you know, first and then real estate second, you know, you, you, you're you not going to be around for very long. How right. do you when people come to you, you know, again, you're a growth coach. Sure. How, how do most people come to you? Do they do, is it that they just want a job and they want time freedom and they think they're going to get yeah. financial freedom and they get neither because, you know, or they never get the financial freedom because they take advantage of the time freedom. Yeah. Um, you know, well, uh, I mean, good. So let me tell you how it works for me. You know, I mean, yeah. my whole system is inter- is internet based, Toby. You know, and so I'm I'm a lead generator. I'm a you know I'm a numbers guy. You know, and so I'm driving as much traffic as I can to that website, moving careerscom I've driven over a million plus visitors to that site, and then I have a contact page where if people are interested in starting a career in Keller Williams or or switching real estate companies, they fill out my contact form. Well, on my contact form, you know, I ask some pre-qualifying questions that are allowing me to figure out is this person that's coming through my website, you know, a 20% lead or are they an 80% lead? So I ask questions like, Hey, are you going to be full-time or part-time, which you and I both know is a trick question. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to be successful in a real estate career being part-time. Okay. It's just not going to happen. And the fact is you can be, you know, a lot of people think, when they think full-time, part-time, they don't understand that either you are thinking full-time, you have a full-time mentality, or you're just not successful. So when I talk to people, you know, that are stay-at-home moms or people that are, you know, have been out of the workplace for a couple of years, they think part-time means, oh, I'm part-time because I have kids. And what I make them understand is, look, you know, you better be, when you're at home with your kids, you better be lead generating full-time. Okay, or you'll never break through. So I'm kind of asking questions like that, like, hey, where do you envision your leads coming from? What's the most important thing you're looking for from a real estate company? So by the time that lead comes to me, I kind of have an idea. Are they thinking like a business owner or are they thinking like they want a job or they want to play real estate agent? Then I try to get on the phone with the people. Hold on. Go ahead. Let me me just interject real quick because – yeah. People, I think, you know, when they think about starting a, a company, a business, whatever, whether it's real estate or or a plumbing company, yeah. part time is not twenty hours, and full time is right. not forty hours. Full time exactly. means full time. You know, Absolutely. You, this is the first thing you you're thinking about your business while you're eating breakfast. You're thinking about your business Absolutely. when you're going to sleep. So I think that is something that that uh, that, that people don't get. Full time is full time. Yeah. It's seven days a week. I mean, Toby, the one thing you're guaranteed in a real estate career is a job, okay? You can, once you get your real estate license, I guarantee you, you will be hired, okay? Right. Now, whether or not you make any money, well, that's up to you, yeah. okay? But the reality is, so, so what I'm trying to do basically, Toby, is I'm trying to figure out what's motivating these people. What's their big why? Why do they want to be in real estate? And if I hear some of the the key words that, you know, you and I think about things like, I want control. I want fulfillment. I want unlimited glass ceiling of achievement. I want flexibility. Well, if you're telling me you want all of those things, and then the next thing out of your mouth is, is how much does it cost? Or what kind of leads do you provide me? You know, there's a disconnect. So what people need to understand is it's very simple. Quality of life in a real estate career starts at lead generation. And if you're not willing to take ownership of generating your own leads, you will be an employee for the rest of your real estate career. Okay. The people that have the quality of life that a real estate career can provide on the high, on the high end, they consider themselves lead generators first, real estate agents second. So bottom line is back to what you're saying, Toby, is how do I, consult these people, I say, tell me what you're trying to achieve. And then I show them how to achieve it. And if they don't like what they're, what they're hearing, that's fine. 
they're not a fit for Keller Williams, and they're probably not somebody that, you know, I should be having a lot of conversations with. But once again, what, what excites me is that they can make a decision now based on having an understanding of what this business is about versus everybody who comes out of licensing school and has no idea what this business is about because they don't teach you about how to be a real estate agent. They teach you how to pass a test. And so these people come out of licensing school, they have no idea what this business is about. So by educating people, I mean, you know, I'm assuming you've read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book by Gary Keller. I mean, look, you know, half of my conversation with these people is leads, listings, leverage. Yeah, I was just okay. gonna, I was just gonna. I, I right. didn't want inter- to break in, but you were talking no, about leads. Okay. I was like, oh, you know, that's 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 how uh, Gary starts his book, right? Leads, right. right? So if they don't like if they don't like that conversation, I mean, the great thing about talking about leads, listings, and leverage, Toby, it's a great way to come from the mindset of contribution, but it's also a great way to scare the hell out of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I'm coming from the mindset of contribution, but if you're not if you're not liking what you hear, this is not the place for you to come, and that's okay. Maybe in a couple of years you'll be ready. But right now, there's no reason for you to be a real estate agent at Keller Williams if you're not ready to be a business owner. Right. Period. So, so you know, one of the big pieces, uh, I think one of the, in that book, one of the very interesting pieces um, uh, that uh, they talk about is, is, you know, building a team and they get into how to hire, yeah. right? Hiring yeah. is, you can be a fantastic sales guy, but exactly. hiring is a skill that, you, that, that doesn't come, nat- comes naturally to very, very few people. Right. Um, mainly because when you hire, you're looking for not good people. You're looking for great people. And, and ultimately you want to try to hire people better than you. And, and that's, that's something. So, so, you know, again, let's go back. You, 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 you pre-qualify these people. You think maybe they, uh, you know, their mindset is right in terms of, you know, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to be full time. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a lead generation monster. Uh, but then they go, you know, they can have the right mindset, but then what, right? So how do you, is, is, does Keller Williams have a, um, look, I know you guys do a lot of training. What, what does that, you know, what do those building blocks look like? You know, certainly, you know, well, I mean, look, yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're a database manager, period. Okay. It's a numbers game. You, I mean, look, your job as a brand new agent or as any real estate agent is to get mind share of as many people as you possibly can. When people think about, hey, I need a real estate agent or they know somebody that needs a real estate agent, it might be helpful if your name comes up first. So, I mean, look, if you open up a restaurant, Toby, you might be the greatest chef in the world, but if you can't get anybody to taste your food, you're not gonna be open very long. Right. The same thing goes for real estate. You come into this business and obviously, you know, one side of this business is, hey, I, I gotta commit to being the local real estate expert. You know, I got to be education based. I got to be knowledge based. I got to be, you know, committed to, to this business so that I can provide value in this business. You know, Toby, I always talk to people that are like, well, I got out of the business, you know, when the market shift, there were people that are saying, Oh God, the market shifted in 2007. And, you know, I, I lost all my business. Well, guess what? The reason you lost business is one, you weren't running your business like a business owner. And two, you probably weren't providing a lot of value to your clients because the, you know, the reality is Toby, a lot of Keller Williams agents and a lot of the top agents at other real estate companies, they had some of the best years of their career when the market shifted yep. in 2007, because guess what? Customers need great agents in a bad market. Okay. So going back to your question, look, so obviously half of, of how we train agents is, is providing them with values, you know, teaching them, training them, agents are sharing ideas, they're learning how to provide value. But the other side of it is really database management and learning how to touch people and being systematic and time blocking for lead generation. I think it's the one thing that pretty much where most agents end up failing in this business is simply time blocking for lead, for daily lead generation. I mean, we're big believers in this company that agents need to be lead generating three hours a day. You know, they need to be locking themselves in their office from 9 to 12 every morning and be trying to add people to their database and touching existing people in their database. Because really, at the end of the day, Toby, that's where the the rubber hits the road in this business. It's about touching database, your database. It's about, you know, staying front of mind. 
And that's what this business is about. You want to be the person that people think about when they have a need. And if you're playing secret agent and nobody knows you're a real estate agent or you're sending out four postcards a year, well, that person who touches in 33 times a year with value, they're not going to be calling you when they have a real estate you know, need, yeah, probably. Yeah. No, look, so Aaron, it's about being systematic I, with, and thinking like a business owner. I, you know? Right, right. No, I do know, and I I totally agree with you. But but I want to. What I'm trying to get at, I want to get to some of that rubber meets the road right now with you. So you can say, yeah, you got to provide yeah. value, you got to build your database, and you got and and then you got a time block. That's great, but but that's you know, right. if you if I just join Keller Williams and you tell me that, I mean, I you and I know that that you know lead generation time block build your database provide value we i know that you know that but okay, people so that's general stuff so then i mean look so then we take so that, i mean and that's going to be the foundational concept there is hey okay. you're a business owner how do you, you do that though like adding so, people to your database the second step of that is look you got to be listing based as an agent well, okay? hold, wait, 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 hold, so, hold on hold on i i know here's what i'm getting at is so so you tell me hey listen Go lead gen for th- time block, lead gen for three hours, add people to the database. How? Like, yeah. again, what like, What do I do? Because p- people don't know that, you know, if you're just starting right. out. So, so as well, we- I mean, look. Well, sure. So, I mean, so, I mean, look, you know, step one is you write everybody you know a handwritten letter telling them that you've become a real estate agent. Then you, then you put them into your database, and now you're, you know, one of the great things about Keller Williams is that our, our touch programs are all systematized. So it's about... You know, I mean, look, it's about picking up the phone. It's about asking people about their lives. It's about asking them about their real estate needs. It's about providing value, whether you're utilizing social media. But it's also taking a more of a listing-based approach to this, which is, okay, look, I'm going to, you know, you can't be the real estate expert of your whole city. You know, one of the things Gary talks about is you got to think small to go big. So, you know, it's about, I think one of the big mistakes new agents make, Toby, is that they spread themselves too thin. They want to be the expert of everything instead of trying to dominate a specific neighborhood or a social group or a first time home buyer. So, I mean, look, you know, I, I could, you know, ha- I mean, there's no, there's no substitute for walking into a Keller Williams office and seeing the training calendar. Okay. And when you see, you know, not just the business principal side of it. You see top agents sharing their listing presentations. You've got top agents that are experts on cold calling expired listings and FISBOs sharing their scripts. The bottom line is you come into this business, you have your contacts, database software. You're immediately adding everybody you know into that database. You're letting everybody you know know that you're a real estate agent. And then the rest of your business is about adding people to that database and constantly touching these people, but also taking a targeted approach so that you're not trying to compete with 5,000 agents in your city to be the expert of Atlanta or Houston. You're trying to be the expert of something small. And then when you dominate that niche, then you can expand past that. But it's just about getting mind share. I mean, look, Toby, there are a lot of people in this business that, you know, I'll politely say, don't provide a lot of value but they're killing it because they know how to ask for business and generate business. And, you know, you can sit in a classroom for six months trying to learn everything you need to know about being a real estate agent. But if you don't generate business consistently, you know, or take that kind of mindset approach, you're just not going to break through. So, I mean, I could sit here for an hour talking about, you know, all the different training classes we have, but at the end of the day, you're a real estate agent, you're a business owner, you know, the more people that know you're a real estate agent and think highly of you, the more leads you're going to generate. And if you take a listing first approach to that, Toby, we know that, hey, listings generate not just more listings, they generate buyer leads. And, you know, look, and then the other side of it is Keller Williams is a huge, you know, we're, 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 we're huge with technology. We're, you know, we believe that the internet, social media, blogging, you know, Craigslist, these are great sources for free leads. I agree. So it's well, about well, taking a systematic approach to that and generating enough leads that it will allow agents to create some leverage in their business to focus on what they do best. Right. And hold on, there's hold a on, billion hold on. different ways you can get there. Pick the one that you're passionate about. Yeah. So I agree with that. But, you know, people – so. 
I agree with with pretty much everything you said. I, here's where, but it's all sort of high level stuff. And I want to go. I want to try to get to one step deeper. Um, yeah. You know, dominate a niche, right? You know what? Yeah. What? You know, how do you find that niche? You know, how do you dominate that niche, right? So, I mean, let's get to some actual training pieces in in this, if we could, because you know the the. So again, so what kind of niches? Examples, Toby, what what kind of actual? I mean, you talking about training? I mean, you know, look, I mean, uh, you know, you want to dominate a neighborhood? Guess what? Go knock on the doors. Okay, yeah. hold an open house. At, you know, every weekend, hold two open houses every weekend in that neighborhood. You know, be, you know, create a community website, start a social media page. I mean, I mean, what do you want me to tell you as far as how you that dominate great. a no. neighborhood? Look, that was two. That yeah. was two great things, man. Uh, that was, so, create yeah. a community website. That's awesome. You know, sure. Uh, do the the Facebook page. That's the, yeah. That's. I mean, right. so I mean, is there any at the end of the day, selling real estate is just getting in front of people. That is it. Now, absolutely. Now there there it's are. A, you know, and, and Toby, to be honest with you, it's not even about getting in front of people. It's it's about capturing the business. I mean, there are people in this business that spend zero FaceTime in front of their clients. All they do is generate buyer leads off the internet. And then they go out and they hire eight buyers agents that take all of their internet buyer leads out and they do all the work and that lead agent takes 50% of the commission and they don't spend a second with that client. And I know you have a lot of listeners that are big thinkers. Well, you know, Toby, the future of this industry is mega agent expansion, okay? And you've got people in this business that are so good and so systematized on generating business in their market that they're just replicating their systems in other markets and finding agents to service all their leads in multiple markets. Yep. So if you're a brand new agent who's playing real estate agent and who's not thinking like a business owner, you're not going to be able to compete in this business unless you take a systematic approach to it and you dominate your niche, okay? Because there's too much competition out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I can think of a a, a guy I'm, uh, uh, that I've had on the show. I haven't released his episode. It's actually part of a, a yeah. product we have. Mitch Reback. And Mitch, uh, fig- he's in Florida. He figured out something that worked. And all of a sudden, he started buying up, you know, uh, uh, web properties and yeah. all across the country and, sure. and and generating leads uh, that way. And I don't know what I don't know what I mean. He gets like a thousand leads a month just organically, right? He doesn't spend much money, right? Um, right. Blogs, man. Blogging it's a it's is the greatest source of free leads. I mean, if, if an agent comes, I'm gonna be honest with you, but if you come in this business today, you don't have to spend the money that agents used to have to spend to build their business up. If you were to start blogging, if you were to utilize Craigslist, if you were to do social media purposely, you know, do a lot of things that don't require money, I mean, you can get to the same place without digging a financial hole to get there. You know? And yeah. Yeah. So look, I mean, here's like, in terms of the internet, like an internet marketing funnel, right, is this, is yeah. Facebook ads to, to uh, a conversion page, yeah. Or to a webinar, you run that webinar and then and then from the webinar, right, you you, you make a sale, right? I think sure. I, I believe that that people can use that typical internet funnel in real estate. I just not seen anybody do it yet. You know, what are you know, you are I mean, you got a hundred thousand agents at, at KW. W- what are some of the interesting yeah. things that pe- that you've seen people do? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I'm, I'm actually living proof. I mean, you told me eight years ago that I would become a blog and social media guru. I would have laughed in your face. Um, but I've been blogging, you know, two or three times a week for the last seven, eight years. And honestly, I can't believe how high my my Keller Williams career blog comes up on, on Google searches. I mean, I'm coming up ahead of Remax's website, Keller Williams' website, Caldwell Banker's website. So... You know, the thing is, Toby, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. So, I mean, we're, you know, content is king when it comes to the internet. So, you know, starting, you know, if you think about tying in what we've said so far, if you talk about think small to go big, well, if you have a website and your website is, you know, Atlanta Homes, well, now you've got to compete with, you know, 5,000 other, uh, other real estate agents that are competing for Atlanta Homes for sale. But if you were to break your site down into sub niches and have a community page or a blog for each, you know, each subdivision or neighborhood in Atlanta, well, now your those sub niches are starting to come up higher because there's less competition. 
And typically most people that blog end up giving up. So, you know, for me, if you tie that into social media and I look, I think when you, when you hear these top agents talking about, you know, how they use technology to, to, to generate business, really what you hear from them is it's about providing value. It's about coming from the mindset of contribution. And as a result of taking that mindset, you become the expert in people's minds and you don't have to ask for business because you're seen as the expert. I think a lot of people try to go for the kill they go for the sale before they've ever established any value. Yep. All right. And I think if you take that approach with internet lead generation, you'll have a lot more success. And obviously response time is critical as well, you know, but um, I kind of got off topic there. But That's right. Yeah. Look, look, let me let me jump on some of that real quick. And, and um, yeah. so first of all. Right. If you if if people are going, hey, how do I provide value before I ask for the sale? And, dude, I, I look a guy called me just the other day. And he said, hey, Toby, I want some scripts. I'm, I want to build this. He's, he bought this online brokerage thing. Yeah. He's like, I want to, I, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's like the Walmart of, he's probably listening. Yeah. But, you know, he's sure. like, I want to I want to get agents. And I, you know, I want them to just give me 50 bucks a month. And I don't care how good they are or whatever. I just need agents. And so he says, hey, right. uh, do you have any scripts? And I said, no, listen, I don't, not, not, for, not for recruiting, but I gave him a name. And this guy sends yeah. an email. This guy sends an email to the name I gave him and dropped my name yeah. in the email and literally right. gave that guy a boatload full of homework. And then he and then like the next right. day he sends me a, a tweet a tweet and says, "Hey, this guy didn't get back to me." And I said, "Send me what right. you send me what you gave me." And this guy boom, closed this guy and I said, "Dude, you need to read." And here's I said all that to get to this. How to provide value before the ask? You should read Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk yep. and yep. He, and he yep. talks about how to do this on social. So exactly. the other thing I want to say real quick, because you brought up blogging. Now you can blog, and 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 you know there's um, millions of blogs. So how do you get how do you get in front? Now there's some smart ways, and and this is something you could probably use, uh, um, Aaron. So Google Plus, right? It's owned, it's owned yep. by Google. Um, if you look up real estate coach, you'll get. I'm looking at it right now. Brian Buffini, um, uh, Mark Ferry, Nar. Uh, blah, 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 blah. sort of at uh, near kind of mid page, um, my friend Greg McDaniel, who is who is, comes on the show all the time, posted on his Google Plus page. Uh, he just says real estate coach. This so yeah. and his post comes up uh, above Tim and Julie Harris dot com, which, by yeah. the way, Tim Harris is coming Harris on the show Harris. tomorrow. Yeah. So <clears throat> anyhow, you can blog. And if you th there's lots of little hacks that you can use in order to, uh, you know, increase your, your, your where you come up in search uh, and, and, you know, and get your brand, get your message in front and out there. So I, I totally agree with blogging. And, and more than that, um, you know, I, I would like to see people uh, do hyper local podcasts. Absolutely. That would be yeah. super, super valuable for your business. Um, <clears throat> well, and, and in terms of, you touched on one thing I want to hit there. You said, you know, there are a lot of hacks and stuff. I look, I think at the end of the day, when you look at who's successful with blogging or internet lead generation, it really comes down to there's no, there's no hack for it. Okay. It's, it's about consistency and persistence over time. All right. So I think a lot of people try to do internet lead generation and they, uh, they, they want to, Hey, let me just throw some money at it. Or there's got to be a better way to do this than me actually sitting down and writing blogs. So they think, oh, I'll, I'll get purposeful about social media and I'll hire somebody to manage all my social media. Well, that kind of sort of defeats the purpose of social media yeah. is to have your social media automated. So what I think people need to understand is that you know, the path to success in any business is consistency and persistence. And there's not a hack for, for success in real estate. The fact is, really what happens, what separates the people that are successful from the ones that are not are the ones that don't give up and the ones that don't look for the quick and cheap fix. It's the ones that are committed to the process because what happens, Toby, is you know, you know somebody wants to go out today and create a real estate training website. Um, I mean, look, I'll tell you, Toby, my website, you know, it comes up for a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with Keller Williams, okay? It comes up for how to pull call expired listings, how to build a real estate team, you know, the showing assistant model. But the point is, it's going to, you know, if somebody wants to try to compete with me, good luck. I've been doing it for eight, seven and a half years. And the amount of content that's on my site, 
you know, you just can't compete with it. So I'm just, you know, I want people that are listening to understand, you know, these things are great, but you can't half ass it because everybody else is doing that too. Yep. And it's the people that are persistent with it that over time we're going to see success in anything that they do. I, I, okay? I yeah, I, look, I, yeah, you got, I 100% agree. You have to, you have to outwork the next day. I will say this. Um, there is no, there's kind of, Right. There is no hack to success in anything, but when you yeah. want to be successful, there, 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 are, there are hacks along the way. Just like that, that Google Plus Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. If you, you know, so you need to don't spend a lot of time in trying to learn those hacks because just, just start working and you'll do it. I will tell you this: there is one thing. There's two things you can do. I anybody could. There's, and I'll tell you what they are. And I figured it out. Right I, after doing a hundred plus interviews. Here's how to dominate your market. Not everybody can do it because it takes money, but but these people are not smart and they're killing it. Um, yep. it, it is one boomtown for buyers leads, for, and then two radio for the the listings. And sure, if you do that, if you can get on the radio, um, and and then and then and then uh, you obviously have to have a team in place. You can yep. you can do 300, uh, 300 transactions year one. I guarantee it. Sure. I've seen it happen. So anyway. Sure. And that's one of, you know, multiple ways to dominate. I mean, that might be one that works for some people, but there are other ways to dominate your market simply without spending money. I mean, I know it takes longer, but um, it's possible. One thing I want to say also, Toby, is that, you know, the greatest hack of them all when it comes to success is obviously there, there are people that have come before you, okay, that have done it at the highest level. It's one of the great things about what you're doing, Toby. It's one of the great things about what makes Keller Williams different is that, you know, there's an incentive at our company for agents to share ideas. So for a new agent to sit down with a guy like a Mark Spain or any of the Keller Williams agents that you've interviewed and they're willing to share with those people how they've gotten there, that's the greatest hack of them all, which is creativity does not come before successful models. It comes after. And you know, you're going to come. If you're going to come into this business and try to figure out some new way to generate business, before you start following the people or modeling your business after the people that are doing it today at the highest level, you're you're not going to get there faster. You know, so yeah, yeah, I, I just want to make that point. No, that no, there I, is a hack, and that is listen to the people that are that are living the lives that, that you want to be living. Period. I agree. Look, I, I totally agree. And, and you know, again, you, you say, I mean, that's what this show is for. That's why I did the show. Yeah. Let me yeah. ask you this. Let me ask you this. And I have, you know, you said earlier, you said walk into a Keller Williams office and I did it. I yeah. did it. And there's, it's a very small office, um, you know, at, uh, at the right where I shop Vons, a grocery store. Yeah. Um, there was a Keller Williams office. I walked in there, right? I had my car and I was like, I wanted yeah. to talk to the people and, and see if, you know, there's anybody worthwhile to have on my show. Now, now I will, let me preface this. Most agents are paranoid, man. I will call in, sure. to, and it's crazy. I don't know why these everybody is super paranoid. You know, I call in, I say, "Hey, listen, I'd I hear, I you know, I find out about somebody. Say, hey, look, I'd love to have on my show." I call their office, and everybody's like, "Oh, you know," at the, I get to the front desk, and like they're sketchy, and and I'm like, "Listen, I'm tr you know, I'm trying to help you build your brand. Come yeah. on my show." And I and listen, I walked into that I walked into that office and it was a trippy feeling, man. It was like they were paranoid, like who are you? And and I'm like, look, I have a show. Well, and but why? Th tell me. So, yeah, we've talked about that. You know, you, you and I've had some backdoor conversations yeah. about that stuff. First of all, let's be very clear here. I mean, number one, there's a reason Keller Williams International has zero debt. Okay, so, you know, we we do monetize our training, our education, our coaching, and you know, we believe obviously the the, the value is there. Okay, but the fact is you're a third party outside of Keller Williams person that, you know, I mean, I know you're successful in your own spheres, but within Keller Williams, you know, I mean, look, you, you know that I've tried to also break, break into that, that circle, but it's, it's, you know, when you're on the outside looking in, you know, people don't know what they don't know. So that's the first thing is that, you know, look, you're uh, some guy who's been successful. You have this mega agent show, but the fact is in some ways you are competing with, the Keller Williams monetized coaching or whatever it might be. So that's a reality. The second part is, you know, look, the Keller Williams model is perfect, but unfortunately there, you know, there's a human element to any model. And I'd be the first person to say it's every Keller Williams office completely following the model and delivering on our value proposition and operating from the mindset of abundance. No. Okay. But the reality is this has always been an industry 
where not only has there not been any incentive for people to share ideas, agents have always been trained to basically compete for the same thing, which is that at, at, at a traditional company, Toby, if everybody's being trained to market Caldwell Banker or trained to market Remax or trained to market Century 21 because their company is spending all this money telling everybody how great their company is. Well, so you've got all these agents that are being trained to market their company, but that means that they're directly competing with each other because there's a seller interview, multiple Caldwell Banker agents that are being trained to market Caldwell Banker. No. So going back to what you were saying, there's always been that, that sort of unwillingness to share ideas in this industry because everybody's an independent contractor and there's never been any incentive for people to share ideas. And I think that's what makes Keller Williams value proposition. What it is, is that we're the only company where there is an incentive. Now I understand, look out in California where you're at in San Diego, right? Toby? Yeah. yeah San, San Diego. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, these are, these are newer markets that Keller Williams has gone into. And you got to remember, we're building these Keller Williams offices on the backs of agents from traditional companies. So, I'm in Atlanta where we've been for 23, 24 years. You know, it, it, it takes time to make people believe that, hey, there's actually a benefit in teamwork. You know, we believe together everybody achieves more. But sometimes when you're taking agents out of these traditional companies where they're locking their drawers at night, there's a certain mentality that you have to overcome. And I think that's where you have found maybe some of the roadblocks locally. But I can also tell you from a company-wide standpoint, it's hard to be a, an outside source trying to tap into the Keller Williams network because guess what? Keller Williams ain't going to be making any money off of you, Toby, and, and that's, that's a disadvantage for you, okay, unless you find your way into partnering with MAPS and Dinah Kokoska. So, I mean, they're very protective of their yeah. – I've, 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 and I agree. Yeah, I agree. Hey, wait, hold, hey, right. Aaron, hold, hold on. Did you just move? I know you're on a cell. Did you just move to a weird part of your house because the audio quality dropped tremendously? I, I did. I'm, I'm back in the space where I was before, so I apologize Got about it. that. Okay. All right. So listen, but we, you understand what I'm saying, right? I, I, mean, I that, do. That's I, why the industry is always, you know, you kind of people are, are scared to share ideas because people have been trained to compete with each other. Yeah, and and, and you know, and I, I I I think that I think that is a. Uh, First, and you mentioned it, right? I and mean, that is coming from a scarcity mindset, not an abundance mindset. And and look, right. I, right. The, here's the deal: I can tell ten people I know what to do. You know what to do to be successful. Right. We can both tell ten people, and guess what? Maybe one is going to take action. Right. So and it's it's Absolutely. it's so crazy that people are paranoid about that. I mean, it's it's anyhow, whatever. I mean, I hope. Well, that's what makes this business so exciting. You know, is that. You know, and I always tell I always tell new people coming in the business that, you know, and Gary, there's a quote from Gary Keller that really sort of started my whole journey nine years ago, Toby. And he said, look, many of the leaders of this industry five years from now, they're not even the, in the business yet. And I think, you know, I can look back at some of the people that I brought into the business in 05 and 06 as brand new agents that were young, tech savvy, you know, people coming out of corporate America. They came into this business. And even with the shift in the economy, these are some of the top agents in all of Keller Williams, six, seven, eight years from, from, from me bringing them into business. So, I mean, that's the beautiful, that's what, one thing I tell everybody in this business. I said, look, if you just work hard and you don't give up, by default, you will be successful in this business because the average real estate agent, you know, politely, I'll just say, is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Yep. And most of them are not running their businesses like businesses. And the people that just come in and are willing to be systematic and persistent, they're going to be successful because the competition is weak at best. That's right. In this industry. That's right. Man, they're weak. <laughs> It's just like, you know, hunting, man. They're weak, man. Take right. those weak ones right. down, man. So listen, we got to wrap. No, but, we got to wrap like in two minutes. Yeah. So here's how yeah. here's how I always end it, right? And you cannot say it's about a book. You cannot say Gary's book, okay? <laughs> Any okay. of them. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. Yeah. What book should I go buy today? You say I can't say the Gary Keller book, right? Okay. And obviously Gary has multiple books. So well, I won't look, bring up okay. the, one, the one thing or any of that stuff, but I think the one thing is kind of – you know, a book that any, for every real estate new agent should read. You just um, did I, it. I will, you just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. You well, I did it. it. Well, of course I did it. Are you kidding me? All right. But this is what I'll say. I'll take it outside of it, and I'll reference a book I've already mentioned in this conversation, which is a book by Simon Sinek okay. called Start With Why. Love and it. I think one of the biggest mistakes agents make, salespeople make, 
companies make, organizations make, is that they try to communicate their value proposition from their what instead of coming from their why. And one of the great quotes from, the, from Simon Sinek is, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Yes. And I think the agents that understand what their why is and know how to incorporate that into their marketing, into their branding, into their day-to-day operations, they're the ones that create customers for life because their customers connect with them on a deeper level. And Toby, this business, look, you can keep throwing money at generating new customers or you can build your business around retaining your existing customers and creating a referral business that will blow any marketing dollar business out of the water. Okay, so bottom line is, you start with why by Simon Sinek. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And if you can learn to communicate from your why, you'll create customers for life. I, I, that, yeah, I agree 100%. Look, I want to say a couple things real quick before we wrap. Number one, um, uh, if you want to get a free copy of any of these books, you can just use our Audible link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Go there, get a copy of, of Simon's next book or, or something from uh, Gary. And before you buy a Simon's book, just Google Start With Why TED Talk, and there's uh, 18 minutes yeah. of wonderful video. We will actually link it. So Charm, uh, Charm uh, my VA, hey, Charm, can you please link, put that link on the show notes. And, and, and that's the other thing, too. Everybody, go to the – if you missed anything, I know Aaron's – he talks very fast. There's a lot of stuff he dropped here. So you can – all the show notes are going to be at, uh, at, you know, at his episode. So Super Agents Live, look for, for Aaron's uh, episode and, uh, and read through it. All right, hey, Aaron, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. We've, you know, we, I met you uh, a couple months ago, and we, and we maybe should have done this earlier, but uh, uh, thanks for coming on. How do people reach you if they want to ha- ask you questions about, uh, about sure. you know, how to build their business well, or always- whatever? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm big on Facebook, so my Facebook address is facebook.com backslash A Kaufman one That's my Facebook address. I'm very, very active on that. I'm also at KW Careers on Twitter, um, or you could just go to my website, moving-careers.com, and, you know, fill out my contact page, and, and that'll come to me. All right. right. But and by the way, by the thanks way, thanks for having me, Toby. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Dude, I, I'm, thanks for coming on. And just, just for clarity, um, your your contact page is not a. It's like a because I couldn't find it. I was I was on your website and um, it's a big apply now button. It's a apply and now button. In my contact. Y- yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. You, so moving dash careers. That's plural. Somebody decided to come out with moving dash career dot com. Wow. So I don't know if you're on that side or what, but mine is. Oh no! I was moving on dash careers. Yeah, moving dash yeah. careers, and then and then his contacts. You got to hit the apply now. It's not a contact yeah. button because I, yeah, I exactly. was searching around. So, hey, Aaron, that's it, man. Hey, thanks for coming on. Let's keep in touch. All right, buddy. See thanks you, a bunch. See you, pal. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. For those of you that want to know what we're all about, it's like this, y'all. This is ten percent luck. 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100%